get you started on your first flight in model aviation. And that means getting you off the ground, into the air, and back down again in one piece. Don't let us kid you. There are a couple of things you'll have to take care of first. Number one, join the AMA. It's a great organization and the umbrella for most of model airplane flying in America. Second, find a club in your area. They'll have the field on which you can fly. Let's take a look at some of the equipment we're going out to the field with today to learn how to fly. This is my favorite RC trainer. It's the Great Plains PT-40. It's a three-channel affair, rudder, elevator, and motor control. Engine, and prop assembly right out here. Obviously the wing and the tail group. Vertical stabilizer, rudder, stabilizer, and elevator. That's where your control comes from. Our radio systems today are Futabas with a buddy box arrangement. And that allows the instructor to take control back from the student immediately. That'll prevent an awful lot of crashes. Chris has our other plane today, and that's the Dora plane. This is a very sturdy new development, Bill. Look at this tail boom. It's made out of aluminum. That'll take lots of abuse. And then the fuselage is made out of plastic. The motor mounts easily. You can put a landing gear on it if you want. And the wing is made out of foam, which is easily repaired in case of a mishap. Looks about as tough as they come. I would say so. One important part of your pre-flight preparation is a range check before your airplane goes up. We've set Chris with our airplane out about uh, 25 yards or so. We're just gonna confirm that we have full control with the antenna down on our transmitter. Let's just see what we've got. We're maintaining full control, so we're ready to take the plane up. Takeoff is going to be yours. You ready for me to hand it off? Yep. Okay, it's in your hands. Okay. Why don't we run through some of that stuff that seems to go wrong over and over again for the beginner? Okay. I see you holding full-up elevator here in the grass, huh? That's right. It's the only way to go. Keep that nose floating through the high grass. Taxi out onto the runway. Turn into the wind. Let's hit high throttle and get in the air. Hold it, Chris. You know, a lot of our viewers may never have seen a transmitter in somebody's hands before. Let's take a run through the function of each of the controls for the viewer. Sure, Bill. What we've got here is a six-channel radio. Our trainer only needs three channels for flight, the throttle, the rudder, and the elevator. Let's take a look at the different functions. In my left hand, we have the throttle control, which varies the speed of the motor. If you push the throttle up, it'll make the engine go faster, and the airplane will climb. Pull the throttle back, and the motor will slow down for landing. On my right is the rudder control. Push the rudder towards the right to make the airplane turn to the right. And we push the rudder to the left to make the airplane go left. The other control on the right is the elevator. Push the elevator towards the top of the box to pitch the airplane down. And pull it back towards yourself to pitch the airplane up and make a climb. Between the two sticks are your trim controls. Trimming out an airplane is not a job for a beginner. Be sure you get your instructor to help you get your ship trimmed out before the first flight. Are 
I see you holding full up elevator here in the grass, That's huh? That's right. It's the only way to go. Keep that nose floating through the high grass. Taxi out onto the runway. Turn into the wind. Let's hit high throttle and get in the air. And off we go. I'll tell you what, Chris, you're going to show some of those mistakes. I okay. guess it's going to be my job to rescue the plane and we'll do it for real, huh? Okay. Common mistake people make is they don't hold the stick, they blip it. Okay. They go like this, you can see the plane jumps. And they mm -hmm. don't use elevator. You better take it, Bill. Hey, Chris, you're challenging me, huh? It's part Ready of my, to take it back? Part of my job, okay. All yours. All right. Now, once we get them holding onto the sticks, sometimes they too, pull too much elevator in the turn. Just roll it right over, huh? Yeah. You want to take it, Bill? I'm going to let it come out of this. Throttle back a little. Let me turn around. Pull her out. We're going kind of fast. I'm going to slow it down a little bit, too, Chris. Get it back down to that training speed. Okay. Let's swing it back into the pattern and give it right back to you. All yours. Okay, I've got it. What should we show next, Bill? Well, how about some of the little bit of aerobatics you can do with some of the trainers? Loops and rolls and things like that. Okay, we need high throttle for loops. Bring it around the turn here. We've got a lot of altitude. You want to start with wings level, push the nose down a little bit to gain a little more airspeed. Pull the elevator all the way back. Hopefully it'll go over the top. Just about, huh? There we go. Okay, let's bring it back a little closer. You know, I can't help but notice an awful lot of people learning seem to fly real far away, and I can't imagine how they can tell what's going on at all. That's right. Looks another, like a little better now. Another common mistake is holding, you know, moving the stick too far. It takes very little control movement to actually fly the airplane. Sometimes people hold the rudder all the way over, and there's really no way that you can get I'm out of that. I'm taking that. I'm getting out of it. Hey, I like this buddy box system. This is a lot of airplanes that don't hit the ground, huh? It's a pretty good setup. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult to pass the transmitter from one pilot to the next. This will save you a lot of crashes. Another one is you, it's called a pilot-induced oscillation. You know, you get the nose down, you down, pull huh? back, you push it down again, you pull it up, and the What's plane the goes up and down. Well, you just got to let go of the stick, let it stabilize, and then start to fly it again. Sure enough, nice huh? and gentle. Easy control movements. We only want to see about a 20, 25 degree bank angle on the wing. If you get much tighter than that, you get some spiral instability and it starts to come in on you. See how it's coming in? I think in? I'm taking it away from you. You're scaring me again. Okay, all yours again. Okay. You know, the other problem is if you use too much rudder and just hold it, you'll wind up inverted. Gee, thanks. Back in your hands for another of those. You okay. got it. Let's try a loop straight at us. See the bottom of the wing comes over the top. Not bad. Back to training altitude. Let's try a landing, Bill. Okay, it's in your hands all the way, Chris. Okay. We'll line it up downwind here. Level the wings out. Cut your power back a little bit. See how we're descending a little bit? Seems like all the way you're sinking down, huh? That's right. We want to wind up at the right altitude at the proper proper space and time. Okay, we bring it around onto final approach here. Cut the power some more. That's dead idle. You want to look at the ground as well as the airplane when you're coming in and add a little bit of elevator at the last minute to get a smooth landing. There we go. Okay, we can taxi back and take off again. We got enough fuel for another one, huh? I think so. How do you keep track of the flight time you've got? You use a stopwatch or something? Yeah, I have a I have a watch with an electronic timer on it that beeps after a while. Okay, again, hold full up elevator on the grass to keep the nose wheel from digging in. Taxi down to the end of the runway. It takes a lot of power to push through the grass, huh? It sure does. It's nice having a paved field. Okay. 
Let's try it again. Full throttle. Steer the airplane. Ease back on the elevator. And we're in the air again. You don't want to climb out too steep. You know, one of my favorites for practice and landings is a touch and go. Maybe you can give us one of those. Okay, we're at a pretty good position right now. We'll cut the power back. Come around onto our crosswind leg, level off. Looks just like a regular landing, huh? Sure. Come around onto final. A little bit of power because we're starting to sink a little low. What's the matter? You can't make it reach the runway with the elevator? No. Power controls altitude. That's a steep takeoff. The controls are getting very mushy. The only solution for that is to push the nose forward, regain some of your airspeed. I guess you can't fly on the prop all the time, huh? No. Okay. Let's try that again. Cut your power back a little bit more. Chris, run that by me again now. In other words, if you're short of the runway, you've got to give it more power. You just can't stretch it with that elevator, huh? That's right. The elevator only controls the pitch attitude of the aircraft when you're at that slow speed. If you pull back on the elevator, pretty soon you're going to stall the wing and hit the ground rather hard. Looks like you could land from there, huh? Yep. Hit the power again, we'll go around. I keep hearing you talking about a stall. Why don't you show us what that looks like? Okay. We'll get up to high altitude here. Cut the power back and feed in up elevator. Eventually the wing is just going to drop straight through. Gee, look at that. The nose went down, huh? Yeah. Okay, to recover from that, neutralize your elevator, add power. As the airspeed picks up, climb up again. Okay, we'll do another one coming towards us. We'll cut the power back. As it slows, we'll add more and more elevator. Things pretty, pretty soon, good, huh? This is a pretty stable airplane. It just holds it right there. Boy, if we were flying some other airplanes, we'd be dead by now. <laughs> Look, Mono airspeed. See how it's settling, Bill? Okay. That we can add a little stall, bit of power, huh? and it won't settle quite so much. Okay. In fact, we can climb out like that getting a little unstable. Well, I guess that's to not get... what you want to have happen on the uh, final approach, huh? No. Right? See? Now it's breaking. There we go. Okay. We'll let go of the elevator. Let it gain some airspeed. Now we're back in full control. Not going to give me any more surprises, huh? Well, I think we can manage one or two more. Now we're getting into some rudder oscillations here. Oh, I've seen that from the beginners. I'm taking it back from you. I don't like what you're doing up there. How about calming that stick motion down? Okay, it's yours. Okay. You know, sometimes people don't realize that in order to add up elevator, you have to pull back towards your, towards your stomach. And they go through the turn and the pilot shouts up and they push down. That's got to be an exciting thing. Oh, yeah, I see that. That was another close one, Bill. Well, I got a hill there, and I'm sneaking behind it once in a while, Chris. I'm bringing it back to us. You ready to take it? OK. All yours. I think I'm going to bring it in, Bill. We're probably getting a little low on fuel. This time, I won't flare quite so much for the for the landing, and we'll show what a typical beginner's landing looks like. Same thing, we're flying downwind. Make our turn on base, level off, cut the power back, make another 90 degree turn. Now, beginners usually, they go, boy, they go back and forth on the rudder. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. That's a typical, a little bumpy, Chris. typical beginner landing, Bill. Okay, well, it's on the ground in one piece. Is that any landing you can walk away from, huh? That's right. Okay. It won't be long after you've started in radio control before you find you'll need a flight box. We've got a flight box here, and in it, we've got a gallon of fuel mounted on the end of the box. 
an electric fuel pump to pump the fuel into our airplane. In the end here, there's a 12 volt wet cell and attached to that is a power panel to light our glow plug. It's got takeoffs for your electric starter right here. For your fuel pump with the switch controls for the fuel pump and also for your glow plug lighter. That'll start your motor. Here's your current adjust. Another useful item you find is an expanded scale voltmeter. This will let you know how much charge is left in the radio, whether it's safe to fly again or not. I have my charge plug mounted on the outside of the fuselage here. You plug it in, and as long as the needle is in the green, you're safe for another flight. Right now we want to fly this airplane on channel 52, so we take our transmitter out of the impound shack, come over here to the frequency control board, check to make sure our frequency is clear. Once it is, we take the pin off the weight side here, put it up on the board, and now it's okay for us to turn the transmitter on. You know, we suggested that you learn how to fly with a lightweight trainer, an instructor, and an organized field. On the other hand, you may not have some of these luxuries. If you're out on the farm, out in the South 40 with lots of room to learn to fly, and you don't mind crashing, we've got the Dora plane here. This is certainly one that can take the bumps and bruises and come back to be rebuilt and flown again. We're going to demonstrate a hand launch for you. Our assistant wants to throw the plane forward. Not an awful lot of throw. He wants to build up a little speed running, keep the wings level, and push it straight forward. So let's see what happens. that anything as tough as this could fly at all. The fact is, it flies pretty darn good. Not a bad trainer at all. It does, Bill. And it's also very durable. We crashed this thing intentionally, I don't know, eight, nine, ten times. And it kept coming back for more. Yeah, I think all we did was put a few props on. In fact, I guess we're coming up to our first crash right here. I don't remember who got to do this, but it's Watch does. out. You know, Bill, looking at this film really brings the whole day back for me. The part I really liked best was the dogfight towards the end of the day. Hey, what a way to wrap up. Our friend Frank sneaked in. You know, he's a pylon racer. He cut all our streamers. That's right. He wiped us from one end of the field to the other. Well, on the other side, he had a big speed advantage, a lot more engine there. We had a lot of fun, though. We sure did. And you know, our club is planning this as an activity next year. Well, we had people lined up trying to grab the transmitters from us. It was so much fun. Couldn't keep them away. Hey, Keith. How does it look? Okay, Chris, let's see what happened. It's not too bad, Bill. Why don't you try the radio? I got elevator, rudder. How about throttle? Still got throttle. Okay. Is the clunk still free in the tank there? Sounds like it. Any the wing only, damage? The only damage is this dent in the wing. The tail, the tail seems to be bolted on pretty firmly. Not too bad. You ready to go back up? Sure, why not? Okay, let's go.
the people involved in radio control are in their 30s or older, the fact is, it's a sport for everybody. We've got two transmitters, which are linked together with a trainer system. And at the flip of a switch, I can take control back from him and save those first crashes. While our tape can help introduce you to a lot of the basics of flight, we strongly recommend that you find a proficient instructor for those first few critical takeoffs and landings. OK, Chris, I've got the master transmitter. I'll flip it over to you and let you have the takeoff. Ready? OK, go. Here we go. All yours. I got it. Let's taxi down the field for takeoff. Steering with the rudder. Easy on the grass. It's pretty rough. Out onto the runway. OK, we'll go to high throttle for takeoff. And we're in the air. Turn away from the spectators for safety. Got a tough sky today, Chris. Got to keep it in kind of close. It's getting a little bumpy. OK, we'll throttle back to training speed. How about we show some of the mistakes that seem to happen over and over again on the first few flights? OK, one of the first is you don't use elevator in your turns, and the nose drops. You take it out from there, Chris. OK. I don't have to rescue you. Yeah. It's a luxury. Also, when people do put the elevator in, sometimes they pull too much, and they wind up in the perpetual un climbing airplane. Uncomfortable positions. We'll recover from that. Okay, we'll bring it back a little closer. You know, I can't help but say they seem to fly around awful fast when they're learning. These things will throttle way back for them too. Sure. Slow everything down an awful lot. Yeah. Sometimes they they also. They make very steep turns. It's not, it's not necessary to go past about 30 degrees of bank. What we like to see is a nice, gentle turn like this. Not too steep. Doesn't Makes... look too bad in the bumpy air even, Chris. Yeah. How about you run it through one landing pattern for us? OK. We're flying upwind here. We throttle back a little bit. Turn crosswind. Almost standing still in that breeze there. Yeah. OK, now we're downwind. We cut our power a little bit more. Looks like you're sinking all the way, huh? Yep, that's what we want to do. We want to arrive at the end of the runway. Bring the power up a little bit. Crosswinds. Power's all the way back now. Let's go around and try that again, Bill. Yeah, almost a landing. Flying back up to pattern altitude. And we'll cut the power again. Same thing, fly downwind, cut your power back. We'll go out a little farther this time. Make a 90 degree left hand turn, cut your power some more, level out. Line yourself up with the runway, make another 90 degree turn. Cut the power all the way. Just keep the wings level, push the stick towards the low wing, prop up the low wing. Let it descend and add a little bit of elevator when we get close to the ground. There we go. Nice smooth landing. Throttle up. Should be able to get off the ground here. There we go. Spring it around. OK. Chris, these trainers do any aerobatics? They sure do. Spring it around close to the, closer to the runway. At high throttle. Start with wings level, pull all the way back on the elevator, and we can go through a loop. Hey, that looks like it'll take a little time away from those nervous flights. Sure, and it's easy, too. Another thing it'll do, pull it vertical, cut the power, and hit the rudder all the way over, and it does a stall turn. Hey, look at that. Bring the power back up. another loop, Chris. I like that. OK, let's start with our wings level. Dip the nose a little bit. Pull all the way back on the stick. Whoa. Oh, we didn't have enough airspeed that time. That's more of a chandelle. OK, let's do that again. Pull all the way back. There we go. We're coming over the top. There's the throttle. loop over the top. Cut the power back a little bit on the back side. Back to full throttle. Think this airplane will roll, Bill? I think you're going to show us, Chris. Let's see what happens. OK, let's get a little altitude so we can get some airspeed. We'll do a split S. OK, 
Here goes a roll. Throw the stick all the way over. Push down elevator hey, when that. you're inverted. Not bad, a regular pattern plane we have here. Hey, they said, said you couldn't do that with three channels, huh? Yeah. Back to training velocity. Chris, I'm gonna take it from you in a minute, okay? Okay, you've got it. Okay. I just throttled up a little there as it went from one transmitter to the other. A little breezy up there, not the best conditions to show a newcomer. The fact is, I can do it. Okay, Chris. I'm gonna swing it back around and hand it to you. Okay. All yours. I've got it. Okay, we'll do a landing approach now. Let's walk through this one. This is pattern altitude. Just enough power to stay level. A little bouncy, huh? Yeah, it sure is. Now we'll come around this way into the downwind leg. Looks like you're going a lot faster. Yeah. Pull the power back a little bit so we start to descend. Descending a little too much, so we'll add a little bit of throttle. Fly out. Crosswind, level off. Another 90 degree turn. Cut your power all the way. Prop up that low wing with the stick. Whichever wing dips, you push the stick towards that wing. Okay, a little bit of elevator to flare out. Boy, on a day like today, I don't know whether I'd rather be flying, watching, or filming, but I do know I like making movies, and I, this is my favorite subject of all. I'm a hobbyist like yourself. I build them, I fly them, I run them, I race them, and I have a great time doing it all. Uh, I'm standing in front of $100,000 worth of gear and a full professional crew to bring you the top quality uh, production available today. Everything is state of the art. And we're doing it at a price that nobody else can touch. Why? It's easy. We're not making any money doing this. So for that reason, I want to say to my dealer friend in South Fork, Indiana, no, don't rent the tapes. How can I make any money if you rent them? And to the rest of my pals out there in clubs around the world, please don't dupe them and give them away. If we don't make any money, at least enough to pay for the production, we won't be able to bring any more films. The rest of you, keep those letters coming in. We love it. And build, fly, race, have fun. Well, that's about it for today. If you're new to the hobby, seek out a local hobby shop. Definitely be sure to get in touch with the AMA. Their number is 703-435-0750. The AMA will provide you with valuable insurance as a member, as well as help you locate clubs and flying sites in your area. For myself and Chris and everybody else, the Milt Video Library, thanks again and good flying.
Milt Video Library proudly presents a complete guide to the selection and construction of radio-controlled model airplanes. Whether you're planning to build your first model or have re-kitted many a plane, you'll get the inside tips from this video for building, covering, and flying. Modeling instructor Bill Fries shows you the tools, accessories, and options necessary, and then guides you to a successful completion of your own flying model. Professionally produced and photographed, how to build and fly an RC model airplane answers a true need for the first-time builder, while revealing special secrets to the experienced flyer as well. How to build and fly an RC model airplane is exclusively distributed to leading hobby dealers nationwide by Great Plains Model Distributors. The Milk Video Library proudly presents a complete guide to the selection and construction of radio-controlled model racing cars. Whether you're planning to build your first model or have chased the checkered flag many times, you'll get the inside tips from this video for championship action on or off the road. Modeling instructor Bill Free shows you the tools, accessories, and options necessary, and then guides you to the successful completion of your own fully painted model car. Let crazy Chris Chianelli, editor of RC Car Action, reveal inner circle tips for racing, tuning, and building to help you get the most out of your vehicle after the basic construction's completed. This video will give you an entertaining, in-depth look at radio control on wheels, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and monster trucking. Professionally produced and photographed, the RC Car Companion answers a true need for the first-time builder while revealing special secrets to the experienced racer as well. The RC Car Companion is exclusively distributed to leading hobby dealers nationwide by Great Plains Model Distributors.